So the premise of the back breakthrough blueprint is pretty much taking these four steps and trying to find out where you are ready to start working at. And so the first step actually isn't in training itself. That's what we would consider non-movement solutions. So things kind of like the holistic approach. Well, if you can't even get up out of bed yet, where do you start? Sunlight, sleep, positive reinforcement, taking what motion and activity you can do. It's not so much about feel good stuff because I know how that feels when you're down in the ditch, someone saying stay positive. Um, we have coaches coming in and putting out good resources like the non-movement solutions, PDF you guys have gotten, and just breaking down how to stay moving, how to give your body as a whole the best chance to heal any injury. And also a large part of step one is to stop re-aggravating the back with whatever's causing it. I thought I could back squat, and then I couldn't, so let me front squat, and then I couldn't, and then let me do a box squat, and then I couldn't, and basically the train of thought just led me down to let me take a whole break from the pain cause and work on the direct issue itself. Step two, which the exercises start at on your Monday, Wednesday, Friday session, is addressing hip mobility. So the main components of hip mobility that relates to the back are gonna be the hip flexor length, achieving a flat ground split squat with the back knee off the ground, chest up, full hamstring coverage, knees over toes, guy, look them up. This is, this is really what the gold standard is for mobility for the hips. This is a direct relationship to pelvic tilt, which we know scientifically has been already out, the data's there, affects the state of low back injury. The classic, tib raise, body weight, no equipment needed. We're gonna go feet on the ground. The further out the feet, the more difficult, the closer it is, the easier it's gonna be. You're gonna bend forward at the hips, put your hands on your thighs, Lock the knees, quads flex strong, and bring the toes up. Slowly lower, bring the toes up. We're hitting the tibbers hard. So we're trying to do 25 reps without any kind of break. I'm actually gonna do it. If you have equipment, getting a tib bar, everybody makes one. I don't know who invented it first. Bob Guida was the one who trained it. I don't really care who invented it, but you can get whoever you want. There's plenty out there. And we want to load up to a substantial weight. This is the tip variation if you do have weight. And we're gonna go for 25 reps again. And we're squeezing the quads, the torso's upright. I like to grab onto the bench behind me. And the main thing you want to make sure we're not doing is using the knees and this little hoopty scoop, dolphin kick, whatever you want to call it. We're going to go strict lift from the ankles. KOT calf raise. Stand about foot and a half away from the wall. You're going to bend your knees as much as you can without the heels coming up. I'm actually going to do it on this wall. I just feel like I got trust issues with the black on black. What did he say? <laughs> So we're gonna bend the knees as much as we can without the heels coming up. As much as our ankle mobility allows, max that range, push your hips forward, shoulders forward, think Michael Jackson, we're gonna pow. Lift the whole body up and forward towards the wall, slow on the way down. Here, we're gonna do a Patrick step. So on flat ground, you're going to lean back, tap the ground as far forward as you can while keeping a straight line from the front leg all the way to the shoulders. So it's kind of testing out your ankle mobility on that working leg. And even if you're at a pain point with the knee, where this is a pain-free range, just work through here, squeeze tight at the top, and work through 25 reps. So that's the body weight version of the step up. If you do have plates or a slant, I will give this preface. You can train it on a slant board. I personally do not really care which not variation really care which you use. It's almost just a different exercise. However, the point of warming up the knee, as it's gonna help us with our split squat, as it's gonna help us with our split squat, getting deep range, being warmed up with the short range, that's all we're after. So if you have a slant board and you really wanna use it because you bought it and you don't want it getting dust in the closet, use it, that's fine. So we're gonna go 25 width. And a lot of people 
have so much pain in the hip, the ankles, the knees, that just jumping straight in isn't feasible with any amount of help. So getting a warm up through the front of the ankles, the back of the ankles, the knee, then lets us combine all of that and the hip mobility. We're gonna do a front foot elevated split squat as high as you need to get in. Hamstring over calf coverage, back knee straight, tall, upright torso. We're gonna go through 10 reps. I'm gonna say you can use weight if you work up through the weeks to a point where you can do a super strict flat ground rep with the same requirements. But I don't need it right now. We're gonna do external rotation as the first exercise. So this warms up the pullover, which warms up the trap three. That gets to the back healing. So I'm gonna go put my right leg on the bench, take my left hand, plant it firmly behind me on the bench. I'm gonna try to position my shoulders right between my thighs in this 45 degree angle. We're gonna put the elbow right on top of the thigh and we're gonna lower slow, keeping a 90 degree angle in the elbow, the raise up. So we're gonna do 15 reps, which is a lot for this. However, we want just one pre-fatigue set to make the shoulders feel really, really safe and stable for the pullover. So if we go into the next exercise is the pullover. We have right here, the form that I wanna ingrain at the bare minimum is that we keep our hips up and lower with straight arms, getting a deep stretch in the upper back. You can definitely hear that pop that just happened right on the camera in my spine. And so you are welcome to drop the shoulders slowly as you raise the dumbbell up to whatever degree you feel good arching your back. So this is spinal extension all through the thoracic and lumbar. And so if we can start to regain both flexion and extension, the combination of the two have been shown to restore back ability time and time again. 10 reps on this. This is the weighted version if you have equipment, if you're in the gym. If you don't, we can go to a wall and we can train a wall pullover, which is gonna be about two and a half feet from the wall, wherever you feel comfortable. Put your hands right above the head level and you're gonna sink into the wall. Let the back arch in full extension and back up. Some people feel the shoulders more than the back. I found if I walk up a little bit, keep it strict. That's a little bit more shoulders. If I go down a little bit lower, then I feel the upper back pulling. And so my only form cues to be strict with this is that you don't work through pain and that you don't try to fake and push into it with your arms. Keep the arms super straight and gradually sink into the stretch for a second. If you have equipment, a bench and dumbbells, this is gonna be your power lift. This is gonna be where you focus all your energy and push yourself. Because the more you can push pain-free strength into this, the more you're gonna to heal to the lower back. So my form check for this, to isolate it, I don't really love putting my knees on the bench. I think my form checklist is feet on the ground shoulders down and back. You're gonna extend the back as we just did on the pullover. And I want you to keep your arms straight and lift. And I'm lifting 12 pounds that I swear are actually 30 each. We're gonna do 10 reps. So we're gonna keep the arms as locked out as we can and reach all the way up and slow on the way down. Or Fred Curley, one of the world's fastest men right now, doing this exercise on the ground, and he has mountains on his back. These low trap muscles are athletic, sneaky cheat codes. Every time we go to jump, we don't just have triple extension, ankle, knee, hips. Watch my spine in a slow-mo. There's spinal extension as well through that upper back. So if I tried to jump as high as I can like this, rounded, versus letting myself extend through the spine. So it's the holy grail because you get to go from the lowest level 
get out of pain, restore posture, restore a good feeling body. And you might just make yourself an Olympian. Disclaimer, results may vary. It's up to you and your belief, but that's how I view it. So the single leg hip flexor raise is gonna let us to train the hip flexors without rounding the back, just to get stimulus to this area without compromising the spine as we gradually build that back extension. So we're gonna go for the single leg hip flexor raise. We're gonna lift the knee up, kick the leg out and lower, just like a gar hammer raise, except this back glute here doesn't move, the spine stays in place. So there is not the lower back rounding. For right now, we wanna keep a strict back as we train the hip flexors until we build up the ability to round in and do our hip flexor training with a rounded back. If you're only getting to here and then you can't even handle it, well, let's stay bent knee and do 20 reps. So that's the regression. If we can handle a bent knee, kick out with a strict pelvis and lower is a QL raise. And we're gonna go on a standing variation, but we're gonna have our feet slightly staggered. So feet together, shoulder width, take a step back so your toe is lined up with your heel. The weight is gonna be on the same side of the front leg. The opposite hand is right behind the head. And we're gonna slide the weight down the leg and reach the elbow up. Now the difference of this between an oblique raise is the range, the intention, and then they're reaching with the other side. So as we get past here and go lower and lower, now I can feel my QL, my quadratus lumborum, the deepest core muscle, which actually connects your lower spine, your L4, L5, L6 segments to your pelvis. So if you see the anatomy, it's what directly attaches your spine to your hips muscularly. We got to pretty much the gold standard of direct low back ability, which is the back extension. Because we're training this flow Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're not gonna do a lot of sets. We're just going to push one set to the max. And to be fair, for some of us, that's going to be here, holding with assistance for 30 seconds. Holding next week with no assistance for 30 seconds. So we're just providing tension before we even get motion into the area. So a lot of us at this position, when we're starting, can get sciatic nerve pain this deep into spinal flexions. So whatever level you're at, whether that's gonna be a hold here for 30 seconds or assisted range for 20 reps, I'm gonna recommend that you find the level that you can do 20 reps at without any kind of fear, without any kind of restriction locking up in the body. Take the win for today, live to see another day, and we'll push one degree further the next week. If you're at a point where you can train pain-free, a full range assisted, let's do that. And if you can go all the way down without any assistance, let's do that and just work up to a strong 20 reps. Once we get to 20 reps pain-free, burning it out through the weeks, then we can train a single leg variation. Again, restarting as a beginner, strict form, all the way down, reach the arms, let the back round extend at the top. Then we're restarting our journey to 20 reps on the left, 20 reps on the right. So step one is non-training solutions. Give yourself the best shot holistically. Stop doing the thing that causes you pain and address this as the weak point that it is. Step two, address hip mobility, starting at the ankles, getting to the hip flexors. Step three, get to the upper back strength, train this with real load, burn it out so you can heal the back and get to step four, which is direct low back ability, very gradually restoring spinal flexion, the thing we're scared of, as well as extension and everything in between. So that's the full four step take. That's my approach with the back breakthrough blueprint. I've seen it work. This philosophy has taken people out um, of a very hopeless place, just on a very slow, steady, scale and that's what it's going to take that's what it was for me and i hope it will uh, help you so